Some might say that the collaboration between Nintendo and Nvidia is a match made in heaven. Nintendo's hybrid console idea paired with Nvidia's class-leading mobile technology have combined to create the platform holder's most successful console launch of all time. The question is, what's the next step for this partnership? Well, first, let's make something clear. The collaboration between the two firms isn't a one-time deal, according to Nvidia at least. In a conference call with investors last year, CEO Jensen Huang said that the partnership will likely last two decades. And this is not surprising, bearing in mind that the setup is so beneficial for both companies. Nintendo needs access to class-leading gaming technology with a particular emphasis on power efficiency for its mobile products. And for its part, the Tegra side of Nvidia's business has hardly been a roaring success. A mass volume deal for what is effectively off-the-shelf silicon is great for the bottom line. It's effectively money for old rope now that we know that Switch's custom Tegra processor is architecturally identical to Nvidia's existing X1 processor. But looking forward, what further gaming hardware can we expect Nintendo to deliver based on its seemingly exclusive access to Nvidia's technology? Remarkably, the processor is already available for Nintendo to roll out a more refined second generation Switch along the lines of the mid-generation refreshes the firm released for both the DS and the 3DS. Now, more performance and longer battery life characterized both DSi and the new 3DS. And that's exactly what Nintendo can deliver by shifting to Nvidia's new Tegra X2. It's actually the processor we hoped would form the technological basis for the original Switch, based on a more efficient 16 nanometer production process and a shift to Nvidia's Pascal GPU architecture, along with double the memory bandwidth. The four ARM Cortex A57 processor cores are retained in X2, along with Nvidia's own Denver 64-bit architecture. It's actually a fascinating refresh of X1, though not a generational leap. And we can get some idea of its hardware makeup by looking at the one shipping product that X2 is available in, the Jetson TX2 Embedded System Kit. Okay, so this is a PCB solution designed for developers looking to create their own Tegra powered devices and it comes with two performance modes. Pushed to the max, GPU clocks hit 1300 megahertz while the CPU cluster runs at 2 GHz or higher. Meanwhile, in efficiency mode, the A57s hit 1.2 GHz while the GPU settles at 854 MHz. In this configuration, Nvidia says that Tegra X2 is twice as power efficient as X1. Now, crucially, its max efficiency mode also disables the Denver CPU cores, leaving just the A57s active. And let's be clear, that's all that Nintendo needs for complete compatibility with the existing Switch library of titles. Tegra X2 ticks all the boxes for Nintendo's needs for a prospective second generation Switch. Even assuming further downclocks, it should still usefully outperform the existing hardware. Increased battery life is a given, plus there's tons of overhead for significant performance improvements when the system is docked. Now, it's hard to believe that those Denver cores will find much use in a prospective second gen switch. And you know, the fact that they are disabled in efficiency mode on the Jetson kit is telling. And the sheer fact that a new processor like Tegra X2 uses the A57s at all seems to suggest that the uh, processor was built with X1 compatibility in mind. Put simply, with a clean page approach to developing an X1 successor, later, better ARM CPU cores would have been available to Nvidia. And some might say that retaining those A57s in the X2's design actually benefits Nintendo more than Nvidia. Beyond Tegra X2, Nvidia has already announced its latest cutting-edge Tegra processor, codenamed Xavier. Still built on 16 nanometer, but GPU core count is doubled and there's an octo-core custom 64-bit CPU cluster. Now, quite how this would map to a kind of next-generation Nintendo console isn't so apparent, but conceivably, we'd be looking at PS4 levels of performance or something in that ballpark. The size of the chip would make it more difficult to integrate into a Switch-type hybrid design, and the processor would obviously be a lot more expensive too. I mean, fundamentally, a bigger chip just costs more to make. Now, power consumption in a GPU twice the size of the current switches would also be problematic, except for one thing. Nvidia has already confirmed that the new Volta GPU architecture used in Xavier is 50% more power efficient than Pascal. 
I mean, it's all rather speculative, but a few years down the line when chip manufacturing costs have come down, perhaps Xavier could work within a tablet style device like the Switch. Other options are available, of course, and anything could happen in this prospective two decade window of collaboration between the two partners. Given a sufficiently exciting, innovative concept, there's nothing to stop Nintendo returning to the dedicated home console arena, strapping its next gen 64 bit CPU cluster to a GTX 1060 class GPU could produce a console that could adequately power a 4K screen. Based on the recent tests we carried out where we deployed PS4 Pro rendering techniques onto mainstream PC gaming hardware. On top of the impressive results seen there, let's just remember how good Nvidia's dedicated graphics API, NVN, has proven to be. Now, the Tegra X1 in the current Switch, vintage 2015 technology, and it's handing in exceptional results from its 256 CUDA cores. GTX 1060 has 1280 of them, running at around 2.3 times the clock speeds, and that's paired with much faster memory. To put it plainly, Nintendo hasn't historically pushed cutting edge technology, but now it actually has the means to do so, should it so wish, and that's entirely down to its partnership with Nvidia. But maybe there'll be a different approach. Last year, there was much discussion of Nintendo's patent for a supplemental computing device, or SCD, that essentially adds additional processing resources to the Switch, with the bulk of the patent discussing distributed computing via the cloud. But the patent also opens the door to a more powerful piece of hardware that could supplement the existing Tegra X1. It could take the form of a larger replacement dock hooking up to the Switch via USB-C with the interface repurposed to act as a high bandwidth connection between handheld and dock. But what about the hardware inside it? Well, back in the day, a leak emerged from the Foxconn factory where the Switch was being manufactured. In some respects, the information proved inaccurate. It put forward the idea of a much more powerful processor, for example, but elsewhere, specifically in terms of the physical description of the machine and its innards, it proved 100% accurate. And there is discussion in that leak of an advanced dev kit, which appears to feature eight gigs of RAM and a processor that's about the same size as the GP106 NVIDIA chip found inside the GeForce GTX 1060. And on top of that, there's another processor about the same size as the Switch's Tegra X1, all integrated into a single box. Now, assuming this isn't fantasy, this dev kit sounds rather like a completely integrated version of the existing Switch and a potential SCD, packed into an all-in-one developer-friendly device. The retail version would simply be a replacement dock for your Switch, to keep things simple, the Switch's CPU could be powered down completely, allowing for higher CPU performance in order to drive much richer visuals, backed by additional cloud resources if required. It's a fascinating notion and a potential route forward for Nintendo and would indeed stand a good chance of trading blows with PlayStation 4 Pro and Project Scorpio in terms of raw graphics power at least. However, the challenge facing developers would then be twofold. Firstly, titles would then need to kind of support three switch configurations, handheld, docked, and SCD enabled. Secondly, even with ramped up CPU clocks on the Switch's processor, we'd still be looking at an underpowered chip setup when compared to a prospective SCD's graphic units. Multi-platform ports would, in some respects, still be out of reach, those with ambitious CPU requirements at least. However, the main point of contention is this. The device described by the Foxconn leaker is a graphics power play, pure and simple. Historically, Nintendo doesn't launch hardware for the sake of improved visuals alone. There'd need to be a compelling, innovative concept behind it. And if this project ever does become reality, we can't wait to see what that actually is. And in fact, Nintendo's future looks extremely exciting regardless. The firm has always made unique, amazing games, but now it has access to some of the most cutting edge graphics technology in the business. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. Let me know what you'd like to see from the NVIDIA Nintendo partnership in the comments below. Like and subscribe to support our work and remember to follow us on Twitter. But for now, thanks for watching.